Greetings, fellow Julia enthusiasts. My name is Guillaume Dahl, and together with Mohamed Tarek, we've developed a new package called implicitdifferentiation.jl, which I'm going to tell you about using a Pluto notebook that is available at this address. First, a bit of background. What is implicit differentiation? Well, it's a very useful technique to differentiate through operations that are slightly more generic than your average function, say, nonlinear systems of equations, optimization with or without constraints, fixed point algorithms of any kind, ODEs, PDEs, etc. In all of these cases, you probably want to use dedicated solvers such as those from the jump or SciML ecosystems. But some of these solvers may not play nice with automatic differentiation. They might be black boxes coded, at least in part, in other programming languages. Or they might require iterative procedures, which are very expensive to differentiate through because you need to unroll the iterations and backpropagate through every one of them. So what do you do? You learn to separate the specification from the implementation. Suppose you have a mapping from an input x to an output y of x. Instead of thinking about it as an explicit function with a formula that you can easily compute, think of it as something that must satisfy a set of conditions. f applied to x and y of x must be equal to the vector 0. This is not a constraint on how you actually implement the solver y. It just tells you the conditions that its output must satisfy at all times. And perhaps surprisingly, we can use these conditions to perform automatic differentiation, regardless of the underlying solver, and without needing to unroll the iterations. So how do we do that? What is this dark magic? The implicit function theorem. If you take the conditions f of x and y of x equals 0, and you differentiate them with respect to x, what you end up with is a linear system of equations. And right here is the part you're interested in, the Jacobian of y with respect to x, which we can obtain in three simple steps. Step 1, call your solver to obtain y of x. Step 2, use automatic differentiation, but not on the solver, on the conditions f, to evaluate partial Jacobians with respect to the first and second argument, the ones we called a and b. Step 3. Solve the linear system aj equals b. If you want to dig deeper into the theory, I suggest you check out this article by Blondel and collaborators. In the meantime, I'm going to show you the practice with the lasso as an application example. Lasso is just a way to tackle sparse linear regression. Suppose we have a matrix of features x with n rows and p columns along with a vector of targets y. Linear regression means looking for an approximation of y that has the form x times beta, where beta is a vector of weights. And in many situations, we want this vector of weights to be sparse, to only have a few non-zero coefficients. This helps with computations, and it also increases the interpretability of the results. One way to ensure that beta is sparse is to select it within a bowl defined by the L1 norm. So instead of only minimizing the squared error, as you would do in ordinary least squares, we do something out of the ordinary. We minimize the squared error subject to the constraint the L1 norm of beta must be smaller than 1 over lambda. <clears throat> when you solve this problem, which is a quadratic program, the effect of lambda on the solution beta is pretty clear. The higher lambda, the more penalization, and the more zeros beta is going to have. On the other hand, the effect of the data, that is x and y, is not so clear. So we want to investigate it. We want to perform sensitivity analysis by computing the gradients of beta with respect to x and y. First of all, of course, we need to compute beta itself. There are many ways to do it. Here, we chose to use the convex.jl library and the SCS solver, because the syntax is pretty self-explanatory. We define a decision variable. <clears throat> we specify our squared error objective, our L1 norm constraint, we construct an optimization problem, we solve it, and we return the value of the decision variable. So far, so good. Unfortunately, automatic differentiation doesn't work out of the box when you do things that way. <clears throat> if we try to compute, say, the Jacobian of the lasso with respect to the data using zygote, it doesn't work. It throws an error. And that could be expected. I mean, our convex solver is not necessarily meant to be compatible with zygote or with automatic differentiation in general. But that's okay, because as I told you before, 
implicit differentiation is solver agnostic. To apply it, we need to define conditions that the output of the solver satisfies. Here, the trick is to see that the optimal vector of weights, beta, can be specified as a fixed point of the projected gradient iteration. So here is the associated function f. And note that this is true even if we use something entirely different to compute beta. The only thing that matters is that we could have used the projected gradient algorithm. <clears throat> so to implement this condition, we need to define the projection onto the bowl with respect to the L1 norm. I won't show it here. And then the fixed point conditions are actually pretty simple to write. Once we have them, we can take our lasso function and wrap it into an object called implicit function, which is the only expert of our implicit differentiation package. And this wrapper is actually a differentiable callable object. So we construct it by combining the lasso solver with the fixed point conditions outlined above. And this has two main aspects. When you call differentiable lasso in forward mode, when you only want to find the vector beta, you see that it falls back on the lasso because both of their outputs are equal. But when derivatives are required, differentiable lasso uses the implicit function theorem behind the scenes along with the fixed point conditions and computes derivatives automatically. So as you can see, instead of throwing an error, zygote.jacobian actually works this time. Now I'm going to give you a brief overview of what's inside the package. We designed it with a few principles in mind. We wanted it to be compatible with chain rules core, that is, implementing push forwards and pullbacks. We didn't want to allocate Jacobians because sometimes you have millions of variables and you cannot afford to fill a matrix of size n squared. So we opted for lazy computation of the linear operators a and b. And luckily, this works pretty well with iterative linear solvers, such as those from the Krylov package. For all of this, we drew lots of inspiration from the basic implementation provided in non-convex utils by Mohammed. But we aimed at making it more simple, lightweight, and with lots of documented examples. And we're pretty proud of the result because the implementation actually fits on one slide. I won't go into detail, but if you want to dig into the code, you can. Finally, here are a few perspectives. We want to improve support for custom structures instead of just arrays. We want to benchmark performance in comparison with unrolling iterations, as well as competitors such as diffopt or inferopt, which have slightly different paradigms. And finally, we want to add more application examples. Thank you for your attention.